Dear friends, 15 years ago, a group of devoted temple members led by Temple President Marsha Waxman and Committee Chair Carol Greenberg, and including Juliet Cooper, Rita Haves, Marcy Janover, Elise Newhouse, Anik Wolf, and Fran Hess, and Rabbi David Posner of blessed memory, set out to reimagine Congregation Emmanuel's approach to lifelong Jewish learning. The process involved many months of collaboration and study about current trends in Jewish education and an analysis of our own synagogue's needs. Together, they envisioned a program where children would love to learn and their parents would love to join them. And then they went in search of an educator to bring that vision to life. The master teacher they found, as you know, was Saul Kaiserman, our founding director of Lifelong Learning. I first met Saul 30 years ago on a flight from New York to Tel Aviv. Little did I know then that the two of us would become partners at this wonderful temple. At the time, the two of us were chaperoning 100 teenagers on their way to Israel for the summer. He was wearing jeans and sandals and had long hair. Rabbi Posner always referred to Saul as Emmanuel's rock star, in part because he looked like one, sometimes with long hair and sometimes not, sometimes with facial hair and sometimes not, but mostly because he possessed an energy that drew people in, and certainly great skill. Regarded as one of the most talented synagogue educators in the nation, Saul has taught the required course on Jewish education at the Reform Movement's seminary, the Hebrew Union College, expert in curriculum development, school administration, and teacher training. He assembled here, as our students and parents can attest, the finest faculty anywhere, and many of them are here tonight. He developed Shabbat Kodesh, a worship experience which engaged hundreds of families through the years in learning, laughter, and song. And with the support of his wonderful staff, other programs like Mitzvah Messengers, The 18, Religious School with Honors, teen trips to the South and to Europe, and family trips to Israel, which he and I led together. And Saul was always eager to experiment with new ideas and new techniques treating our school as the laboratory for Jewish learning we would want it to be. His work always guided by the principle that we as Jews ought to care for the world around us and for one another. And truly, he was concerned about each and every student and their interests because he knew that if he could pique those interests, then the Jewish community would have them forever. As a result, our families loved him and the program he created, and his faculty held him in the highest esteem. And Saul's efforts extended well beyond our religious school. His was a critical voice in the synagogue's strategic visioning work, and he was an invaluable resource and partner to our lay leaders, to our staff, and certainly to me. Besides Saul, every step of the way, as his collaborator, has been our Associate Director of Lifelong Learning, Rachel Brumberg, with her wonderful ability to implement to the finest detail their highest hopes for the program. And in particular, the last few years, Rachel has engaged and raised up an extraordinary group of teens to become the next generation of Jewish leaders, lay and professional too, I suspect. And with Saul and Rachel, the past six years has been Jackie Schreiber. This last year, when Saul stepped away to pursue his doctorate, Jackie stepped in as our program's acting director. She leaves us for her new position closer to home as director of education at Congregation Emanuel of Westchester. We take pride in her success, knowing that the Jewish community will be stronger for her leadership. We will be celebrating Jackie on Sunday morning and Monday afternoon. 
I also want to acknowledge the departure of our beloved teacher, Megan Sass, who has brought so much joy to our school community, and this summer will be headed to Los Angeles, where she will no doubt find great opportunity to blend her theatrical talents with her passion for Jewish education. Through the years, Saul has surrounded himself with the best colleagues, both here and in other congregations. And we are so fortunate that one of those close friends, Ira Wise, will assume the role of our Director of Lifelong Learning in the coming weeks. He, with Rachel and Karen Roman, will lead us forward to new great successes because he will build on a foundation laid with such love and dedication by Saul. I would conclude by noting that during the early, most difficult days of the pandemic, when my clergy colleagues and I were reaching out to the many of our members who had lost loved ones, and the many more for whom COVID posed particular physical and emotional challenge and risk, there was another segment of our community around whom Saul wrapped his arms and kept connected. And that was our school community. And I heard from many parents just how much that meant to them and to their children. With all his many talents, that precious loving spirit is Saul's greatest gift. And it will be missed. Now, as we continue our tribute, I would call first the chair of our parent association, Louise Santa Cruz, and then representing our students seventh grader Emma Grody. Thank you, Rabbi Davidson. Shabbat Shalom. As the chair of the Religious School Parents Association for the past several years, I'm given the distinct honor to thank Saul on behalf of all the parents in our community for the incredible work and legacy he's given our children. For those of us who attended religious school here many years ago, like I did, and I remember many years ago standing there for my bat mitzvah, what our children learn now is a foundation for their entire lives as Jewish learners, and members of not only the Jewish community, but of every community they are a part of. And the reason we remain in the Temple Emmanuel family is the love and the connection we felt as young students at the school. The vision Saul had that he so expertly executed for our children went beyond history and Hebrew. He created a curriculum that allowed our children to feel a part of the entire Jewish world no matter where they find themselves. As an example, the Tefila program was something that didn't exist when I went to school here. And it's something where I can see my children when they go to other synagogues or shul with their cousins and their family or Shabbat at my brother's home, they're completely engaged. They know the words to all the prayers. And that really resonates with me. I think that sense of belonging within one's own community is a gift to our children from Saul, and it's immeasurable, and it will stay with them throughout their lives. I joined the Parents Association around eight years ago and became the chair three years ago. It's my last year. And in, in that time, the committee witnessed how engaged and driven Saul was and the commitment that he had to our children and their families. He asked our opinion each month about how the parents would react to changes he was thinking of implementing, he listened. When we asked him to include social stories for children with special needs, he and the clergy jumped on that. When we told him that we wanted to talk about diversity through a Jewish lens so that our children could learn about Jews in other parts of the world, like those watching in Israel and Latin America and Europe and Asia and Africa, he worked with the faculty to incorporate that into the history curriculum. When we thought about how we could support our children through COVID, not only ensuring there was no break in their learning, but their personal and emotional struggles were supported, he developed some programming around that. Saul wears many labels, 
He's a pioneer, an innovator, an educator, a musician, a scholar, a husband, a teacher, a father, and a friend. And he's all those things to all of us. And for that, we are filled with immense gratitude. I would like to thank Saul on behalf of all the children and their parents and their grandparents from our community for all that he has given us. Thank you. The first time I met Mr. Kaiserman was well before I began religious school at Temple Emmanuel. As a four-year-old at nursery school, I can remember his smiling face in the halls on afternoons he would come by. If anything, it's his smile that I will never forget. When I began religious school at age seven, it was his smile that greeted me in Semiades. There is always a calming effect when he is, when he is around. When he is here, we know two things for sure. Number one, everything is going to be okay. And number two, everything is going to be fun. Mr. Kaiserman is the rare adult that will ask you how you are doing and be genuinely interested in the answer. If you have a project or an idea to share, he wants to know about it and sings its praises. When I invented a game for honor roll, he volunteered to play it with me at Shabbat Kodesh, recruiting other players along the way. He is often the highlight of a service the, happy, the happiest and most exuberant singer and guitar player to grace the Bima. I know I am not the only one who feels this way. There have been so many times my mother has come home from a Shabbat Kodesh or parents association meeting singing his praises. He makes you feel valued and connected in spirit and in song in a way that cannot be taught. Ironically, it was during our year of remote learning that I really got to see Mr. Kaiserman's ability as an educator on display. I know so many friends from other schools who took the year off or dragged their feet through a tough year of religious learning, but not at Temple Emmanuel. I look forward to Mondays, to seeing the dinosaur he puppeted, to hear his happy welcome, and to see what fun activity he had in store. He may be solely responsible for a lifelong obsession with Kahoot for my family. Mm -hmm. I remember when my mom found out he would be stepping down and how bummed out she was. I also remember her telling me there was no one else she wishes only the best for. And I agree, Mr. Kaiserman is what I would call infectious. And I know that is controversial in these times, but I mean that in the very best way possible. His smile, his joy of learning, his enthusiasm, his warmth and pure spirit will be solely missed. But we wish him luck, happiness, and health in everything he sets out to do next. I consider myself privileged to have had him here as long as we have had, and privileged to honor him this evening. So thank you, Mr. Kaiserman, and Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Louise, and thank you, Emma. Saul, would you please come join me? As you officially become our Director of Lifelong Learning Emeritus, I'm delighted to present to you this gift on behalf of our congregation selected by Carol Greenberg. It is a piece by an artist I know you appreciate, Asya Katz, and it is entitled Freedom. And it depicts a man riding a bicycle on a tightrope arms open wide with joy over a city brimming with color. It reminded us of you. With it, please accept our deepest thanks. Did you get to see the picture? Should I hold it up? This is really, really special to me. 
That's really. Uh, I, I prepared a story to tell. <laughs> I was, I hope, I hope you're in the mood for a story. It's a story that I learned when I was a kid in religious school and I mean, it's meant a lot to me and I hope it will also mean something wonderful for you. So many, many years ago in the time of my grandparents, great grandparents in a small town in the Ukraine, there lived a great rabbi, Yisrael Baal Shem Tov. And times were hard for people in this town. They were poor, they were often hungry, and there was a lot of hatred. And sometimes and their, their lives were just dangerous just because they were Jewish. But in the times of the greatest crisis, the Baal Shem Tov would bring all of the community to a secret place in the forest. And he would light a sacred fire and recite a special prayer and tell old stories and ask for a miracle to save them from the threat. And the people would join in the prayers and tell their own stories and they would take heart and find strength and find hope and God would hear their voices and a miracle would happen that night and the people would be saved. Well, over time, many of their children and grandchildren moved to the great cities of Europe and they built beautiful synagogues and many became quite prosperous and their children and grandchildren crossed the ocean to the United States where they built more sanctuaries like this one and knew even greater fortune than before. But even back then, in the time of my grandparents and great-grandparents, things weren't always so easy. Sometimes there was great trouble, suffering, from wars, from disease, or just from hatred. And in the times of the greatest danger, they would turn to their rabbis and teachers and ask them for a miracle. But the rabbis and the teachers, they no longer knew how to find the secret place in the forest or how to light the, the special fire or to say the sacred prayers that the Baal Shem Tov would say. So the rabbis and the teachers would stand in front of all the community in their sanctuaries and they'd say words like these, God, I don't know how to do miracles like the Baal Shem Tov. I don't know the secret place in the forest or how to light the sacred fire. I don't even know the special prayers. All I know is how to tell this story and I pray that it will be enough. And the people would be comforted and they would find strength and hope. And once again, God would hear their voices and a miracle would happen and the people would be saved. And so here we are today, even farther away from the Baal Shem Tov and that fire in the forest. And again, we're in a time of insecurity and things aren't so easy. Maybe it's even a time of crisis and great danger. So how can it be that my telling you this story tonight could be enough to make a miracle? So I'm going to tell you a secret. Come in close. It wasn't because of the forest or the fire or the special prayers. That's not where the miracle was. The miracle isn't even in the old stories. And the miracle isn't in the storyteller. The miracle is in the people coming together. When we make this place our sanctuary, together we build a community where we can take comfort from one another, where we can be inspired, where we can be challenged by each other, where we can be challenged by each other's stories, where we can find hope and strength. And so we started a tradition in the religious school all those years ago that we based on what you traditionally say when you finish reading a book of the Torah. 
You say, chazak, chazak v'nit chazek. And we used it whenever we added a new prayer into our children's prayer books, and we started using it at other times too, because what it means in English is, we are strong, getting stronger, getting strength from each other. And I'd like to ask you, if you would, and you, if you're watching on the live stream, maybe you can do this wherever you are as well. Will you join together with me and do it like we do it in the religious school? We say it three times, getting louder each time, and then we end with the Hebrew, chazak, chazak, v'nit chazek. So join with me. We are strong, getting stronger, getting strength from each other. We are strong, getting stronger, getting strength from each other. Look at each other. We are strong, getting stronger, getting strength from each other. Chazak, chazak, v'nit chazek. I am truly blessed with a miracle to be in this community. I have grown to be the person who I am today because of all of you and the love and strength that you have given me. And I am so grateful to you all. I will be back here again and again, and I hope that all of you will be too. Shabbat Shalom. Say before we part, so much of me is made of what I learned from you. You'll be with me like a handprint on my heart. And now, whatever way our stories end, I know you have rewritten mine by being my friend. Like a ship blown from its mooring by a wind in the sea. Like a sea drop by a sky bird in a distant world. Who can say if I've been changed for the better, but because I knew you. Because I knew you. I have been changed for good. But 
that I guess I know there's blame to share And none of it seems to matter anymore Like a ship blown by the morning By wind of the sea Like a stream that meets a Like a sea dry by a bird And because I knew you, because I.